Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be unboxing the New Ray Boeing CH-47 Chinook. Uh, if I remember right, the scale on this model, they said, was 150. It could be 160th. I don't remember. It doesn't say on the packaging anywhere what the scale is. Um, I'm just going off of based on where I bought this. I bought this at Hobby Link for about $20. And it does say adult assembly required. And then over here it just says assembly required adult assembly required and it shows a screwdriver now i don't know what i'm going to need I, I got some i got my exacto knife i got some gorilla glue i got some super glue we'll figure out how to open this and check it out now on here it looks like it's mostly pre-constructed already but there are some pieces under here that we'll have to assemble and it says united states army there that's pretty cool. Like decals are already attached. And it says for someone eight and above. I mean, I don't understand who they think uh, adults are. <laughs> but let's give this a shot. Let's see how do we open this. Ah, oh, looks like it might be one of those boxes that you open like this. And they have other models in this line. I actually considered getting the Sea Knight or even the Seahawk. Uh, the C9 is actually a CH-46, um, which I had the pleasure of jumping out of both the Chinook and the 46. Okay, comes out of the box, completely in its own little tray box thing, and then this little piece of paper. I assume this is assembly instructions. Set that off to the side. We might be using that later. All right, it comes in a formed. Oh, look at that, a screwdriver. Okay, cool. So it comes in a uh, vacuum formed plastic. Um, I'm just going to start pulling parts out. I probably won't need these glues, and I probably might. Hopefully, I don't need this knife. Um, how do I want to start this out? I wanted to go for the big pieces, but I think against it. I'm going to go after this. I think this is the rotor housing, the engine cowling kind of thing. We'll set it off to the side. And then... Okay, that's being held in by plastic. I might have to pop that out from the bottom. So let's do that. Let's just lift the plastic out. And there's some things underneath. Uh, one of them is the base. I wasn't planning on using the base. Oh, it's 160th. Right there, 160th uh, Chinook. Now, I'm, oh, the reason why I got this was because I planned to make an XCOM game, a uh, miniatures game, similar to Xenonauts. And Xenonauts, early in the campaign, you use a Chinook to get to your uh, battlefields. And... So I'm going to use this as a terrain piece where the Chinook is landed on the table. I'm not going to put it on display, but if it's a simple slide-on, take-off kind of display, I might use that. Okay, let's open this packaging. I've got my Exacto right here. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, now this, is, I believe, is the undercarriage. But I'm just going off of what I think it is. I think this is the undercarriage. That's the trap door that the, um, that the um, crew chief looks through to direct sling operations. This looks like um, a piece of plastic. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. This looks like part of the ramp in the back. And I like how right here it says made in China. Popac New Ray manufactured in Don, Don Juan, China. Interesting. And then this looks like an engine P 
piece, maybe the tail rotor. And then I notice it's got the like um, serial number of the helicopter on there. That's that's pretty uh, cool touch. I don't see any screws. Okay, we haven't got that far. I don't know why you need a screwdriver if you're not going to use screws. Okay, well, I'm just uh, getting all the pieces out. Okay, the, and the reason why I, I want to poke from the bottom. Oh, look at this, the rotors, right? This is these are all plastic, very soft. This is a softer type of plastic. That's cool, and I assume these slide and snap into place, like if I was to physically slide them out, and I don't know. I don't want to force it, but I'll have to look at assembly instructions to see. But they're all on a hinge, and they all do move, so I assume they do fold all the way out. And there's the front rotor and the back rotor. Um, they look the same, so they're probably interchangeable. We'll figure that out. And I noticed on the one of these, one of the windows is a well, actually, one here and one there. Those are um, bubble windows, so you can actually stick your head into the window, so you can see for, so you can see down, basically, or up, actually, I suppose. This plastic, this uh, vacuum-formed plastic, seems very soft. The quality of every piece that I've pulled out so far is is good. Okay that's in there nice and tight and I don't want to break anything so I'm thinking of cut it, thinking of cutting it out actually actually I'm gonna cut it out there you go Ooh, that's heavy that's metal Yeah, that's metal. It's got some weight to it. Okay, let's just set that off to the side. Just looking at my little ruler here, you're looking at about a 10 inch fuselage. Ah, look at that. Here's some screws. There's a little screwdriver, a little Phillips head screwdriver. Nice. Like some landing gear. Wheels are moving. More plastic, not rubber. Looks like they're put together pretty well. There's one of the engines. Uh, exhaust. Okay, that engine went flying. Let me go get it. Alright, that engine went and flying somewhere. All right, so let's get this plastic and put it off to the side. All right, now let's bring up the assembly instructions. So my initial review of this thing is this is, this is metal. The rest of this is all plastic. Okay. Just looking at the instructions, it looks like put both sides together with the ramp. Put the top piece on. Put the back engines on. I'm not sure what these are. Oh, is that saying apply some glue? What is that? Oh, that's screws. Okay, because these are screws. These are screws with washers, I guess. And then put the front and the back on. The wheels on. 
the bottom of this piece and then screw the bottom of this onto the helicopter. Okay, well, if this base plate didn't have so much, if it was flatter, I might have considered using this. It's like almost two inches wide and five inches long. I could have not attached it to the helicopter, put the helicopter down, pick the helicopter up, put troops on there, put the helicopter back, but it looks like I'm not going to do that. Okay, and then put the satch that, put the propellers on, last thing. Should have a finish nook. Okay, so let's get started. First things first, we're putting the two sides together but it's, it implies that the ramp, okay, it looks like the ramp needs to go in between these two. Okay, so the ramp needs to go in there. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now my question is, okay, these do kind of snap together. That's what I was wanting to know. Does it does it snap in place? Are there things on the top and the bottom that? Snap in. Okay. Let it just sit there for a second while I get these. All the screws out. So it's showing that two A's hold together. These are the A's. Okay. Okay, well, it looks like even with it screwed in nice and tight, it looks like if you put this in like this, you can actually get it to go in. Uh, one in back, one in forward, it'll go in. Okay. So there's no rush on that one. It can pop off if it wants. Okay, so now we're going to do the top piece. It looks like this one. It looks like it just snaps into place. I'm going to take that out. How does it snap? Just underneath, maybe? Yeah. Well, as soon as I snap that in, it's done. It's in. Okay, so that covers that. Next one looks like the engines. They look like they also just snap in. But then it shows a couple of screws there. A couple of B screws. What are the B screws? What are they doing? Oh, okay. Well, these don't snap in, they just sit in. And then I guess I put the B screws in underneath. Okay. Figure that out. So let's go with a B.
I wish this thing was magnetized. Okay, I grabbed a couple of my magnets. I just attached them to the screwdriver. Should make it magnetized. Perfect. When putting this on, you see there's a little open area for the engine. That goes into that piece that sticks out. It's the only way it will fit, actually. I'm actually glad this piece fell off because otherwise it would be hard to get to these screws. And they don't look like they're both going in the exact same direction. That engine is in there. Oh, do the other engine. All right, so we got both of the engines on. Um, that's all three. Now we're up to four. That's snapping in the front and the back. Um, that's these guys. It looks like the big circles in the front and then the blade is in the back. Okay, it does look like some screws are gonna go into that. Looks like two more Bs. on this one. Okay. All right, we've got the back piece on there. Now we're going to just screw this first piece on, the front piece. Looks like it just snaps in. And then there's one screw that goes right there. So now we got the front and the back in there. Set that off to the side. It looks like we're going to be working with the base next. I'll put them in here. Looks like. Okay, they only go in one way. They're grooved, so you just gotta turn it till you find the right way for it to fit in. And then let's put those screws in. And that's just to hold them in place. Right, perfect. All right, now it looks like the next step is to put the bottom of this on this. All right. Now I do also want to make sure that this is on before I There we go before I fin finalize any bottoms Whoops okay there's a tongue here that needs to go up underneath this. 
the front. That does look pretty good. So we got the bottom screwed in. Starting to look pretty good. Now, last step is putting the rotors on. And it doesn't say which one's front, which one's back. I don't think it matters. This is just a snap in plastic piece that's just going to snap into these holes. Oh, wait, maybe it does matter. Oh my gosh, there's a much bigger hole than this. So this has got to go in the front. I don't think it would really matter though. Okay. Well, I see a little plastic here and a little plastic there. Flash, I'm going to get rid of it with my knife. Because that would have interfered with its ability to rotate. Which I think might be an intentional thing, but I don't care, I want to rotate it. There we go. Ah, I'm going to take it off. Okay. Snaps right in there. And they can rotate. And then this one in the back snaps right in. Okay. Now, because I'm the kind of person that wants to have his rotors out, ah, yes, they snap onto the out. Now, now I've got rotors all the way out. Just be careful how you do it. There you go. Okay. There we go. I've got the finished Chinook. I'm going to snap the door closed. There we go. Looks pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down next to some 28 millimeter figures and we'll do a money shot and you'll get to take a look and see what it looks like. All right, now this is a full shot. Um, I don't have any modern guys painted right now. All I have is some bolt action World War II 101st paratroopers. Now, um, you can see the scale of this. It looks almost perfect. And then uh, let's go ahead and get a close-up of the helicopter. You can see the paneling, uh, detailing. You can see the serial numbers. Uh, it's even black behind the engine here. Uh, you can see the U.S. Army, the windows, you know, the... the cockpit, window shield, the wheels. I really like it. Now, the only thing I don't like, um, and that's this center seam right there. But for a wargaming miniature, I can overlook that. Plus, I could always, if I ever did not need to, I could always fill that with putty or something and then paint over it. But I think it's good the way it is. It's got some heft to it. It's a, it's a metallic model uh, with plastic parts. And if I need to, I can fold up these propellers. And for display purposes, it comes with its own flight stand. You know, so, I mean, you can even use it like this if you're flying over the objective. You know, you just want to use this as a flight stand, you can. But um, it's really for display, you know. All right. Thank you for coming out and checking out this video about the 
new Ray Sky Pilot Boeing CH-47 Chinook and its assembly. And if you've got any questions, uh, let me know and, I'm, and you'll probably see it in the future when I start working on my XCOM game. Alright guys, I'll catch you next time.